Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Now today is the last month, last day of the month of May. Praise God. And hey, we're going to be having our prayer and fasting meeting beginning from tonight all day throughout tomorrow. And then we're going to be praying according to the watches. Join us via Zoom for this all-important prayer meeting. I don't want you to miss it. Say, listen, God is taking us into a place of rest. God is taking us into a place of rest. And I'm going to be expanding on that first during the prayer meeting. And then we're going to be looking at that going further into the month. Hey, please join this Zoom prayer meeting. And we pray, we pray for one hour at every watch. So the meeting starts at 12 midnight tonight, 12 midnight West African time. That's the time zone we're following. So 12 min midnight West African time. We pray at 12, then at 3 a.m., then at 6 a.m., 9 a.m., 12 noon, 3 p.m., 6 p.m. And the last watch is 9 p.m. Now, for each of these watch, watches, we're, we're going to be praying for one hour. I'm going to take out time to teach, then we'll pray on and, and several prayer topics that we deal with. And that's one way we secure the month. You see that now? Because we work with this principle, if the first fruit is holy, the lump is holy. So if we give the first day to the Lord in prayer and fasting, then hey, Guess what we're doing? We're securing the whole month. So that's why we fast. And we fast until the last prayer watch. You can do it, praise God. Join us. The, the, the Zoom um, ID and passcode is on your screen. So take note of that. Set an alarm and let's meet tonight at 12. God bless you. Praise God. All right then. Now before going to today's broadcast, can we call for that daily bread? I don't know what you're expecting from the Lord today, this last day of the month. I don't know what you're expecting of Him. But listen, you should be expecting great things from the Lord. So join me right now as we declare, say, Father, I receive right now my daily bread and everything that has been owed me this month of May, I receive it today in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. All right, then. Now, I'll share. In, we're, 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 we're rounding off with, the, with our topic, the true light. And Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Anyone who follows me will not walk in darkness, but he shall have. I know the Lord said this to me. He said, a lot of my children are not walking by the light of life that I've given to them. A lot of God's children are not walking by the light of life that he has given. So it means he has given, but we don't walk in it. Hmm. How is that possible? Yeah. And this is what the Lord told me. He said, you are giving something. But then, you see, <laughs> He's giving you your light to life. But you are still depending on other people to see. So you still choose to walk under other people's light, though you have been given your own light. So that's the reason, though many in, the, in God's kingdom carry light, but they all are still walking in darkness when their own life is concerned. Now, walking in darkness doesn't mean you will not move anywhere. I told you earlier, uh, earlier this month, there are people who have mastered the act of walking in darkness. They've mastered it physically now. They enter a dark place. They know how to move. You see that? They know how to move. Someone else walks in, ah, I still can't do anything. Someone else enters that darkness 
and he starts moving and, and getting the things he wants to get. You see that now? Now, the darkness he's talking about now is not physical absence of light. Is you know, when you say spiritual darkness, someone may not quite get it. The darkness is this kind of light that you are trying to find your way. Meanwhile, you would have just lit that light or put on that light and now you can see where you're going. And the truth about this is where you are going may not be where another person is going. That's why you need your own light. And Jesus has promised that if you follow him, he will give you the light of life. So your life, if you're walking by the light, becomes a testimony to another person. Now, your light now helps another person light his light. Now, that's how it's programmed to work. But when you don't light your light and everyone is following one person's light, they are all after that person groping in some form of darkness. And guess what happens? Even the person you think you're following also misses way. Why? Because all those voices are dragging the person. Let us see, let us see, let us see. You know how it is. But Jesus has given every one of us the light of life. Our job, your job, is to take your light and by faith. Remember the Bible said, the just shall live by his own faith. The just shall live by his own faith. Not by another person's faith. It's the same thing. Because faith is light. You remember the Bible said faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by what? The word of God. It literally means hearing the voice of God. That's actually what he said. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing the voice of God. Now the voice of God is the light of God. Because Jesus talking about light, when he said, I am the light of God, anyone who follows me. How do you follow Jesus? You follow him because of his word. You follow him by obeying his word. It's as simple as that. We don't see Jesus physically walking to say, oh, let me go and follow him. No, you can't travel to say you're going to meet Jesus because I want to be a follower of Jesus. So I'm traveling all the way to meet him. No. It is his word that he has given. It is his word that he is giving today. As long as you listen, obey, believe, and follow his word, then, now, now, you get to that point where you're following his word, you know, generally. But then, as you follow, you now receive your own light. Now you begin to receive your own instructions. And that's when God will begin to tell you your own specifics. He will begin to tell you, do this every morning. Don't do this. Now, you may think he's talking to everybody until you know, hey, well, no, 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 no. But God said I shouldn't do it. Then you begin to realize it's you. And when you start obeying him for yourself, you will begin to produce testimonies. And when you start producing testimonies, it will now give other people avenue to look and say, hey, I can see better now. Oh, now I understand what I saw three years ago. Ah, now I get it. Now what's going on? Everyone's light is supposed to make the other person's light brighter. Everyone's light is supposed to make the other person. What do I mean? Every voice you respond to, every voice of God you respond to, it will make another person understand the voice he has heard. That's just the truth. So when you don't act on the voice that you have heard, now we're talking about the voice of Jesus, talking about the voice of God. If you don't act on the voice that you have heard, you are not only going to stay in darkness, you are going to cause darkness for other people. Because it's all interwoven. Jesus speaks to this person. And remember, his word is eternal. He speaks to this person. This person takes it and obeys it and produces a testimony. Then someone else hears that. Oh, he said, wow. Wow. Sometimes when we see things like that, we repent before and say, Lord, 
told me something three years ago and I've not done it. I'm so sorry, Lord. If I had done it, I would have had a testimony like this person. Lord, I'm sorry. Can you help me? Can you give me that word again? I'll keep it. Yeah. Because someone else walked by his light. So now you see, I was reading something. Matthew chapter 6. Jesus speaking here says, take, they say, take no thought for your life. What was he doing? He was manifesting his light. It's true, his words. He was manifesting his light. So now I go before the Holy Spirit and say, Lord, how do I walk in this? How do I obey this? How? Then the Holy Spirit begins to speak to you that asked. This is where no pastor may help you. I'm telling the truth. Your pastor will just tell you, look, you can ask God for your life. That's his job. But the asking is your job. The pastor cannot even pray, God, give him his life. No, you are the one that would desire it. And how hard, how well do you desire this light? And you desire it from the Spirit of God. Lord, show me, how do I walk in this reality? How do I obey this thing that Jesus has said? Because it's a command. Then the Holy Spirit will begin to teach you. Now, that's what Jesus said. He said, you are clean through the words that I have spoken unto you. I love the way the Amplified puts that. That's in John chapter 15 and verse 3. He says, you are clean through the words that I have spoken. And the Amplified said, the teachings that I communicate with you, or the teachings that I discuss with you. So when you go before the Lord and say, how do I walk? What happens? He visits you and begins to teach you. Now, when he's teaching you what's going on, he's cleansing you. He's cleansing you. Now, when you now accept his teachings, believing them, and then begin to walk in the light of it, John told us, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship. And then what happens? The blood of Jesus Christ is going to begin to cleanse us from all sins. Now, what's John saying? So, first of all, he reveals his light, now, which is his voice, which is his word. He reveals it to you. And then you believe it and then begin to take steps. So, now, Jesus has said something. He says, your father knows that you have need of this. Thing. So, so, God knows I have need of it. So, wait, wait, wait. God knows I have need of food every day, yeah? God knows I have my bills to pay, yeah? God knows I have fees to pay, yeah? God knows I have to take care of my family, yeah? All these things your father knows. And he's not knowing it to just keep it in memory. He knows to do something about it. So if my father knows, I should ask him instead of worry, yeah? So, Lord, okay, I have this bills to pay. It's the end of the month now, Lord. I need to pay my rent. I need to pay for this bill. I need to pay for that. Yeah, Lord, I receive from you. Lord, he said I should not take thought. So I'm asking you, and I said, that's what you do. You have received this life. It is changing your mindset. Now, it's not complete yet, because sometimes people just rush with half-baked word. So you begin to practice this. I'm not going to worry again. But I'm going to ask you, Holy Spirit, Lord, I'm doing this for the first time in consciousness. I need you to help me. So, I normally will be concerned about my monthly bills and everything I'm supposed to do at the end of the month. I used to complain that even my salary is not enough. But now I'm realizing I've been doing what is wrong. So I'm not supposed to do that. Okay, so Holy Spirit, I need, I need your help. And that's how you're sincere before me. I need your help to do this work. I need your help because 
I don't know how to go about this. But at least I can ask. So Lord, I've got 30,000 to pay for this bill. And I've got, and, and sometimes you can write down those things and put it before the Lord. Say, Father, here are the things I need to sort out. They are my bills. And I bring them before you, Lord. You said I should not take any thoughts concerning them. And going into this new month, I shouldn't take thoughts. Yes, I won't. So, Lord, can you guide me? You see that prayer you pray with a sincere heart? The Holy Spirit will take you. And first, he will begin to bring informations to you. And that's even why this message is coming to you. To some of his answer to the prayers you have prayed. He begins to bring information to you. He begins to bring words that will direct you. See, that's what now he will begin to direct your path. And before you know what's happening, he starts teaching you. He will start teaching you a lot of things. He will teach you about giving. He will teach you about tithing. He, now, nobody can preach tithing enough. I'm telling you the truth. Until the Holy Spirit teaches you personally. That's where you really understand. Until he deals with you concerning it. That's when the understanding will become clear. Just the words of men, it won't go the complete circle. But the Lord, who's our teacher, when he teaches you, see, his word will now dwell in your heart. It will, it will. You will get an understanding and know, even you to explain it to people, you just realize that I'm not really doing justice to this thing. You know, I've, I've, sometimes I finish teaching on tithing and I go, did I say it well? Because there's, there's a weight inside of me that you, I, I wonder, did I communicate it well? Because I'm leaving it. And I'm not leaving it because somebody sat me down to teach me. I'm leaving it because the Lord keeps opening my mind and bringing this truth concerning it to me. And because you're doing that, He begins to open your heart. He begins to make you see His promise. And as long as you believe His promise, then He begins to give you His commands. Now the Holy Spirit, who will now help you keep His command, is the same one as you obey Him that begins to open the doors. And then suddenly you realize, wow, I really struggled to make money this month. And, and money was just coming from everywhere to praise God. Yeah. Listening to me, next month is going to be explosive. I see it already. But don't forget to join us tonight at 12 mid night. The Spirit of God is going to visit us mightily. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, I bless everyone listening to me. Let them manifest your truth. And Lord, let a miracle happen in their lives to crown this month. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow, which is next month. Praise God. Bye.